This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This lecture is on Chapter 2 of the Paper F5 lecture notes uh, and it's target costing. Uh, and as you have seen in my um, previous lectures on activity-based costing, I'm not actually going to read the notes to you word for word. That would be ridiculous. Let me explain what's happening. Uh, by going straight into examples, and then we'll have the uh, discussion uh, that goes with it. Uh, and I think you'll find uh, the actual, I hope you'll find the actual arithmetic um, very straightforward. So um, th this could never be an enormous question on its own. Um, but it is an important area. And it's a modern area and it's a very common area. But let me explain what I mean with example one. Packard PLC are considering whether or not to launch a new product. Sales department have determined the realistic selling price will be $20 a unit. Uh, we have a requirement that all products generate a gross profit of 40% of selling price. Well, the steps that are involved in target costing are this. First of all, the first thing we do is we determine a realistic selling price. So if we get costs completely for the moment, I've got a new product I'm going to launch. We look to see what a realistic price will be, what price people are going to are likely to be prepared to pay. We'll need research, we'll have the sales department involved, we'll look to see if there are similar products, if similar products exist and are being sold at 20, then maybe we'll have to sell at 20. Maybe our product's going to be better, we can charge more, or if something is good, we'll have to charge less. But we get the sales department to determine how much they think we're going to be able to sell it for. And of course, in this question, it's $20 per unit. We then decide what our objective is. How much profit do we want to make? Well, that's up to the individual company. There's no rule here. In the exam, you obviously have to be told. But it says in example one, they have a requirement that all products generate a gross profit of 40% of selling price. So fine. We are going to launch this new product. We want to make sure it gives us 40% of selling price. Um, and of course, what does, what's that? 40%? Selling price is 20%. And so we need this product to make a profit of $8. What we then do is we put the two together and we determine the maximum cost to achieve that profit. And so here, if we're going to be selling it at 20, if we want a profit of 8, then surely the maximum cost will have to be $12 per unit if we're going to make that profit. And that 12 is the target cost. Now, arithmetically, I've finished example one, but let me carry on show you how this is used and what the importance of it is. Remember, we haven't started making this product yet. It's a new product. But we've decided if we're going to sell it and achieve what we want to achieve, then we're going to have to be able to make it for $12 a unit or less. And so what we then do is calculate or estimate the actual cost
Uh, we do have costings. Maybe we'll use activity-based costing, as uh, I went through in the previous lecture. But we do our costings and estimate what the cost unit is going to be. If it's less than $12, great. We can go ahead, we'll make the profit we want, no problem. But suppose it's higher. Suppose I estimate the actual cost and suppose I get ooh, $15. And I, I invented that. I, I invented a figure just to explain how we use target costing. So I reckon it's going to cost 15. Well, what are we going to do? It's costing more than it should have done. We say that we've got a cost gap. We think it'll cost 15. It should only cost 12. And so we've got a cost gap of $3. And when then we look for ways of removing that cost gap. Look for ways of removing the cost gap. And getting the cost down to the $12. Now I'll discuss separately how you might go about doing that. Uh, I, I, you know, I can't say everything at once, obviously. But getting the actual target cost, we just follow the instructions. But it is rather important, I will say more later, about what we do it, well, what we do with it is here. If our cost is more than the 12, we need to find ways of removing the cost if we're going to get the profit we want. Now, as I say, we'll have more discussion later. Let's do a bit more arithmetic. Just one thing to be careful of before I look at example two. They can give you a very similar question to example one, but change the wording slightly. Suppose I told you that we had a realistic selling price of, let's say, 50, and our profit objective, uh, we want a profit of 25% of cost. So it's very similar, but there is that change of wording. The last time we wanted the profit to be, um, what was it, 40% of selling price, and that would be easy. Here we want the profit to be 25% of the cost. Now this is something you should be able to cope with with no problem because of paper F2, but just for everybody's benefit, think about this. If the cost was, let's say, 100, we don't know what it is, but if it's 100, the profit would have to be 25%, which is 25, and therefore the selling price would be 125. Or looking at the other way round, for every 125 selling price, the profit is 25. Well, our selling price is 50, so the profit we need, it's 25 for every 125. So we would need a profit of $10. And now, of course, it's easy. What would be the maximum cost, the target cost? Uh, selling price was 50. We want a profit of 10. The target cost would be 40. And of course, it does work. Remember, the objective was that the profit is 25% of cost. If cost is 40, 25% is 10. That's it. So I'm just saying be careful and read carefully. When they give it you like this, have they given you the profit as a percent of selling price, as in example one? Or have they given it as a percent of cost, uh, as I, 
uh, just sitting without even venting at some point. All right, well, almost certainly any target costing, uh, you'll get the profit in one of those two ways, percent of selling price, percent of cost. Uh, just to be safe, though, look at example two, which is it slightly differently. We're about to launch a new product on which we require a pre-tax. Now, I shouldn't have used abbreviation. It's something we discuss later. And again, ROI was mentioned in F2. Uh, but it means return on investment. So our target here is that we get a return on the investment of 30% a year. The buildings and equipment needed, so the investment we'll need, is 5 million. And again, we've had our sales department do work, um, and they think we'll sell 40,000 units a year at a selling price of 67.50. Well, you can get the same answer several ways. I'm not going to do it several ways. That's up to you. Uh, but uh, let's have a look. First of all, the total revenue. Total sales that we think we're going to get. Uh, 40,000. 67.50 a unit. So we think we'll earn. Two point seven million. Uh, the profit per, per year, obviously. The profit we require it says we want a return on investment of thirty percent. The investment was five million. So we want a profit of one and a half million a year. And therefore, what's the total cost we can afford? Is 1.2 million. Now that's the total, but we want the target cost always per unit. And so the target cost per unit Uh, total 1.2 million. How many units is it? 40,000. Uh, therefore, it's $30. So I say it's less likely to be given in that way, but it could be given anyway. It's obviously up to the um, business to decide uh, on how to get the target. But there's the target cost. We've got to make sure, I'll try and make sure, that we can actually produce the product at a cost of less than $30. Well, I said and I hope the arithmetic was pretty straightforward. Uh, but it's, it's very popular, you know, as at MCQs in particular. And I'll break there, but I'm not finished there. Because, uh, as I said several times in the previous Electron activity based, just as important for the exam is being able to improve uh, to prove that you understand what time costing is uh, and how we might use it and problems and whatever. So I'll discuss all that um, in the next lecture.